Hey everyone, welcome to Tales in Text. I'm your host Nisha and in today's episode I want to talk about a series that I recently finished reading which I think is absolutely incredible and which I really want to share with the world. So this is definitely going to be a sort of book review or a series review but I want to talk about uh, all the books in the series individually for a little bit and then kind of talk about the series as a whole and just describe what I feel this series is really great for and why you should read it. So you know what, I'm hoping to convince you by the end of the, by the end of this video that if you haven't read these books yet, that you should just go and pick them up right now. <laughs> so let's get started. So the series that I'm talking about is Adrian Tchaikovsky's The Children of Time series. Now you might have come across this if you are familiar with science fiction and you read a lot of science fiction books. Um, Adrian Tchaikovsky's books within this series include three books with the first one of which is Children of Time, the second is Children of Ruin and the third is Children of Memory. Now Tchaikovsky has written many other books as well all of which are now currently in my wish list because I just cannot wait to devour more of his works but for now let's just stick to these three. Uh, I came across or rather I <laughs> let me just give you a little bit of a backstory because you know I I generally do not read science fiction and uh, one of my 2022's uh, new year's resolutions was to ex expand the kind of books that i read and kind of become more diverse in my reading choices and i had noticed that all throughout you know the all through these decades of my reading experiences i had never explored this genre of science fiction um, and so I decided, okay, you know what, this is going to be rectified because at least I need to try science fiction once and before ruling it out without trying it. And so I decided to make 2022 my year of science fiction. And so as I was researching and, uh, you know, about different science fiction books, I came across a YouTube video talking about the children of time. And I was enthralled by the premise of the book. And so when I got my Audible credit in, I think it was, I'm not, I think it was February of 2022, or maybe March of 2022, I'm not really sure when, I picked up Children of Time. And as they say, the rest is history. So the Children of Time, so let's just kind of look at, uh, you know, each of the books individually for a little bit and then I'll kind of tie them all together. So the basic premise of this Children of Time series is that the earth is destroyed. There is uh, no life on earth anymore or at least there is no visible life on earth anymore and humanity is forced to uh, go into outer space in search of a new home. The series kind of works its way through multiple perspectives. First off is the perspectives of the terraformers, that is the people who leave Earth when Earth is in the last few centuries of its existence. And these terraformers head out into outer space to find planets which they can terraform, that is they can make them livable so that their future generations can come and occupy them uh, when the Earth inevitably does implode. Then another perspective that we look at is a few centuries down the line, the descendants of these terraformers who are traveling through space looking for these planets that their ancestors had supposedly been terraforming. And it's their experiences of, you know, whether they find these planets or not. And if they do, what do they experience uh, on these terraformed lands? Do these uh, new planets meet their expectations? What's exactly happening? How do they cope with their new life on this new planet? after you know spending so many years on earth and then just traveling through space for so many day for centuries for many of them and millennia for others so how do they cope with that kind of loss of their home the, of the home that they remember and then the new home that they're supposed to inhabit and populate from now on and the third perspective is actually really unique it's because um, again, I don't want to give any spoilers, so I'm going to try to say this in as least spoilery way as I can. One of the results of the terraforming projects um, is that it isn't that the, the microbes that are used to speed up evolution don't really work in the conventionally expected way. Now, what they do is they speed up the evolution of creatures which are which take very well to the planets which are being terraformed 
and every planet that is being terraformed is completely different they have different chemical properties they have different um geo geographical geological characteristics they have different oxygen characteristics so every even though the same set of creatures are introduced to all of these planets different creatures emerge victorious and emerge as the top dogs and so when evolution is speeding up an unintended con consequence of terraforming is that creatures that were not intended to be humanized you know i say humanized because to to kind of give them the level of intelligence that humans possess they end up being humanized and so the third perspective is through these creatures who are humanized <laughs> and that's where it gets really interesting because at its core the children of time series is about uh the uh, is about humanity coming to terms with and actually experiencing the consequences of our greed of our of uh, the choices that we've made that have resulted in the destruction of the earth and it is meant to be a wake up call for all of us because as you've seen you know climate change is getting worse and worse each year and uh, we have less than 8 years to uh, stop the rising of temperatures because uh, by the turn of uh, you know 2030 uh, it will be too late to make any sort of changes that can have a positive enough impact to help the earth and to help us now the the fact of the matter is the earth will continue right the earth is not really going to go extinct the, the, this climate change is not a problem for the earth because the earth has been going through mass extinctions for billions of years and it has survived every time and every time there has been an extinction or there has been a a catacly cataclysmic climatic event sure life is wiped out but it's only wiped out for a short period of time for a couple of million years but life always comes back the problem is that we might not come back right we might not come back and many of the animals the innocent animals the innocent trees who populate the earth with us today they might not come back so the problem of climate change the consequences of the climate change is for us we are at threat and all the animals that we love all the trees that we love they are at threat the earth is not at threat so i think understanding this concept that whatever we do today you know what we sow today we will reap tomorrow i think that is what this series is really good for and why that brings me to my book by book short analysis so the first book children of time looks at um the very first terraformer or the lead terraformer from earth abrana kern dr abrana kern who is determined to create her own planet called kern's world where she wants to be the first person to create a fully terraformed planet where humanity can have its first abode outside of earth and the book follows her journey uh, while also kind of parallelly running the stories of her descendants who come many centuries later in search of her world only to find that her, the world that she has created isn't exactly designed for them anymore or it isn't even meant for them anymore because the people or because the creatures who inhabit kern's world aren't human and there is this sort of species you know opposition species fight that takes place in order to claim the world you know is is kern's world uh rightfully mankind's humans because it was created by by humans for humans or were or is this planet uh does this planet belong to the creatures who have called it home for centuries for millennia who have been here part of the evolutionary process from the get go right so th the first book the children of time actually once again brings up the whole debate of human versus wildlife right the whole conflict human wildlife conflict that is there even today and the conflict of sharing of resources the conflict of sharing of land and the conflict of um sharing this home in a way wherein we are all equal participants we are all rightful owners equal owners of this earth um that conflict is once again is mimicked in the children of time and 
we see that humanity is sort of on the same war path of making the same mistakes that we've been doing right now and if and and the book is about how this culminates how what how exactly is this issue resolved and does is a resolution achieved in the first place um, do people do do humans continue to make the same mistakes that that they did which caused the earth to uh, you know, to to kind of self destruct. You know, all those years ago, are they doing the same thing with Kern's world, or is another alternative solution achievable? So that's what the first book is about. The second book, The Children of Ruin, uh, once again kind of pans between the narratives of another terraformer who is Avrana Kern's contemporary, and um, the consequences of the terraforming of a certain planet. In The Children of Ruin, we meet uh, multiple characters which include uh, Senkovi and Baltil and Armalante, who are the three major characters in this book, who are all, you know, uh, Dr. Avrana Kern's contemporaries. While Kern was sent to Kern's world, or she chose to go to this planet which she called Kern's world, um, Senkovi, Baltil, Armalante and their crew decide to head on another space mission uh, to another part of space in search of a planet worth terraforming and so they come across this planet which they call Damas Damascus and they start terraforming Damascus now what happens is Damascus is lying very close to um, the orbit of another planet which they call Nod and in Children of Ruin we encounter something really extraordinary. We encounter our very first extraterrestrial beings, beings who are who have never been a part of Earth evolution or Earth soil and who are completely alien in their very DNA. And uh, it is with this interaction between the terraformers, the Noden creatures, and the creatures of Damascus who evolve as a consequence of terraforming which ultimately lead to such tragic set of circumstances that which ultimately lead to such a tragic future which is which ruins the whole purpose of creating a new home and which ruins everyone's life which ruins humanity's life it ruins the life of all the creatures on damascus and it just creates this snowball of tragedy which kind of really to me it brought to the fore just how terrible human intervention is when it when when it comes to when we when we meddle with nature when we meddle with wildlife because one of the things that you see uh, in Children of Ruin, which you don't see in Children of Time, the first book, is that in the second book, Senkovi actively meddles with the evolutionary process in order to um, highlight certain traits, personality traits, physiological traits, and just behavioral traits, um, intellectual traits of the creatures who are evolving. He does not actually intend to create a planet for humans rather he deliberately and consciously meddles with evolution to create his to have his own creations as they say to create creatures um, which match his vision of a sentient and intelligent being and when Senkovi reaches a point where he's meddled too far, where things are just have gone too wrong and are too out of his control, he tries to pull back the reins, but it's too late. And while he tries to warn his creatures to avoid making the mistakes that humans made or to avoid doing the same meddling behavior which humans have always indulged in, those please fall on deaf ears and that leads to another chain of tragedy that leads to another ruinous um, landscape ruinous life ruinous future for everyone involved so for me this book was actually kind of um it kind of 
it was out of it moved out of the um because the first book for me was a reflection of where we are heading if we go on the path of, that we are doing right now you know with climate change and everything if we don't fix ourselves if we don't stop doing what we're doing if we don't stop harming the planet the way we are doing right now uh, the children of time uh, experiences can actually take place that that might be where we find ourselves the children of ruin it, it talks of another facet of human wildlife human nature interactions where con constant and conscious meddling with the with nature with the evolutionary process just for kicks right just for our sadistic pleasure it can ruin lives it can ruin countless of lives it can ruin countless of creatures it can it can spawn generations of trauma and tragedy and it again talks of you know once again about boils down to human greed and what it leads to um the third book which is the of memory is once again an interesting take because this book for a for the majority part it actually brings in a very very important human element and what i mean here is the children of time and the children of ruin are for the most part like at least i would say 60 to 70% of both the books um uh, are told from the perspectives of non-human creatures um and only a very small percentage of the the first and the second book are told from the lens of humans and so you get to see the perspective of life unfolding uh, of evolution being fast tracked and of the consequences of human meddling uh, from the perspectives of creatures who are not human in children of memory we actually turn the tables and we bring back the descendants of the humanity that left the earth in search of a new home so here we don't actually see any terraformers we we do um there is a references to the original terraformers but we actually meet characters who are descendants of um arc ships who were the descendants of terraformers you know right so they weren't the terraformers themselves but they were the descendants who were born centuries later who lay in their you know uh who lay in sleep for centuries for millennia as they traversed through space in search of a planet that had been terraformed and so it was their descendants who finally embarked onto the planet and we see the actual reality of <coughs> what might happen if humans are able to make land because once again in the book 1 and book 2 uh, are very different because the people who were intended to receive the planet as a new home it doesn't go as smoothly right there is no smooth sailing there is no conventional resolution which in of memory um, adrian chaikovsky takes another turn what if none of these in impediments from the first and second book were there but what if humans actually did get to land on a terraformed planet and they did get to have a second chance at life what if they did get to have a second chance at creating a new future for themselves what then and it is with this premise that the third book begins and once again it is a bucket load of tragedy <laughs> because all of the characters live in the shadow of the earth they live in the memory of the earth they live in the memory of the times that they uh, that that the that they grew up in on another planet the descendants of the people who do make land for live in the memory of their grandparents great grandparents and their ancestors um striving to achieve the quality of life that they have once had that their ancestors once had on earth all those millennia ago and the third book is about what is the reality what really does happen and this third book really kind of it's i think it's a it's a really beautiful way to kind of wrap up the series because so far we've been looking at non human perspectives of what happens you know when when you're fighting for your home when you're trying to make create a home for yourself find a place for yourself and uh, 
this third book is all about you know even if you find a place to call home it doesn't necessarily become home we start out with the premise that you know the, there is this at the outset of the three books there is this promise of a better tomorrow and that's how you know things are even in real life today right i mean we sit here we talk about climate change we talk about environmental degradation we talk about the ozone layer thinning we we talk about the potential destruction of the earth but it doesn't really concern many of us right it's something that is ambiguous it's something in the future it's not something that we should be worried about it's something that our descendants should be worried about and who knows you know whether we'll have descendants or not whether our line will be alive then or not or whether we will be reborn again or not so why should we bother when it isn't really something for us right now to think about and given how ai is exponentially um becoming exponentially better these days a lot of us also have this false sense of security um and false sense of trust in technology believing that if push comes to shove and if we do experience problems in our lives if we do reach a time when when the earth is really um about to self destruct when humanity is at the brink of destruction brink of extinction if push comes to shove technology will be advanced enough to save us technology will be advanced enough to take us to another planet as though you know we are traveling from one place to another in our car right it's that simple there is always this hope for a better tomorrow because as a species we humans just cannot imagine or cannot even envision the possibility that one day we might go extinct or that one day there might be no second chance one day there might be no second home this is it the earth is it this is it we we've got the best right here we've got heaven right here and there might be nothing left for us or there for us tomorrow when things inevitably go wrong so the series as a whole you know it starts out with this sense of promise but as it moves towards its you know its culmination you see the tragic set of events the tragic consequences of human greed of human mismanagement of resources of human um apathy played out across millennia and across space and time and it isn't just humans who face the consequences it's so many other species too and ultimately the book ends with on a very tragic note to be honest i mean yes the story itself in certain parts i know some of you who who might have already read these books might feel like hey you know what i think there is some hope because of certain events that transpire the the that that sense of having hope and looking for a a better future is still there but to me if if i'm looking at the series as a whole it it really highlights the fact that that you know whatever future that this series promises that it ends on isn't something that you should be really proud of isn't says it isn't something that we should really look forward to it's not the kind of existence um that makes us feel good that 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 is proud worthy or worthy of respect right so yeah um this series the children of time series was a roller coaster uh, it was an emotional roller coaster i listened to it on audible and it was just spectacular uh, and uh, yeah i think you should really pick it up the first book does have some technical scientific jargon but for the most that's just only in the first maybe 10 to 20% the rest of the first book and the second and third book don't really have too much technical jargon there is some world building as is you know common with science fiction so that's something that you do need to pay a little attention to if you're listening on audible you might have to listen to it a couple of times because that's what i had to do because i was not used to that kind of level of world building 
but uh, overall i think this is a very beautifully beautifully written uh, set of uh, novels the characters have been sketched out beautifully the uh, their emotional landscape has been expressed very beautifully the their challenges their physical challenges mental and emotional challenges all of them the, the relationship dynamics between humans and non humans they've all been chalked out brilliantly and in a way there is the the one of the final things that you come out with this book is that there are alternative solutions where you can work in partnership with other creatures with other species and with other individuals uh, in such a way where you all share your resources as equals and then ensure that you collectively thrive instead of just you know individually looking at getting ahead at the cost of somebody else only to hit a dead end later you work together as partners as equals and you thrive together so that's another message that you get out of this book and which is why i feel like everyone should read this series because i think we can get a lot out of it in terms of understanding how we need to re-envision our relationship with other creatures and with our land today as we are living right now uh, and getting these lessons getting these understandings uh, uh, you'll know about this if you read the book so getting these understandings um will help us redefine our relationship with the earth and will go a long way in allowing us to find uh, you know holistic ways sustainable ways to preserve the planet to help protect wildlife and to ensure that the earth continues to thrive and to ensure that all all our species you know all the other animals and plants and insects and birds and even humans that we continue to thrive together for millennia to come all right if you stuck around with me so far thank you so much for watching and do let me know in the comments down below if this review of mine has inspired you to pick up this series or at least one of the books and uh, let me know if you already read these books what do you think about them i can't wait to find out so all right thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day bye bye